soggy out here today. Looks like they were ready to shoot again today, but of course it's the weather. That's usually what you have to deal with too. You plan it for the days, but then this stuff is unpredictable. Gotta change it to a different date. Seems like everyone's getting arrested for drone related stuff today in terms of the news. How's this? It says Heathrow drone protest. Five arrested over planned disruption. Climate change activist group Heathrow Pause said it aims to use devices within the no-fly zone as part of the efforts to halt the airport's planned expansion. Police made the arrests in Bethnal Green and Highgate on Thursday. The group said it had up to 70 more pilots available to fly drones and would carry on exactly as planned. And apparently it says in one of their posts, it says the action will carry on exactly as planned, peacefully and non-violently, regardless of today's events. We thank everyone for their support with love and courage. Heathrow pause. We have contingency measures in place. Thank you. It kind of makes you think here as an example of you make something so crazy, make a hysteria out of it. People will say, oh, it gets a reaction out of people. Let's do it. As well, it kind of makes me think of that whole point again where everyone keeps comparing, say, a drone, like a regular consumer one, as if it's some complex aircraft, like a manned one. Whereas, like, even in this case, we're like, we have 70 more, quote, pilots. I don't know, in my opinion, just with examples like this, it's not the same thing overall in terms of the way people use a drone. It's simplicity compared to, like, say, a full manned aircraft. Not saying what they did is right. But it just makes you wonder if it's too overcomplicated in many cases. Such a good example here too. Make a huge spectacle out of it and there's bound to be people who will kind of take advantage of the hysteria. How about this unfortunate one? Basically there were some content creators who were travel vloggers from what I gather who flew a drone in Iran and because of that they got arrested. It says here, Broken dreams, the glam life of Brit blogger jailed for flying drone in Iran whose tour countries with a quote, bad rap to prove they're not dangerous. And then another one here, it says, Australian couple face 10 year jail term in Iran for flying drone near Tehran. So it's the same one, but just to clarify, there's actually two people in this. For this one it says, the identities of a British Australian blogger and her Australian lover who are facing 10 years in Iranian jail have been revealed. Building designer Jolie King and construction manager Mark Firkin were arrested in July after they were caught operating the drone near Tehran without a license. And this was such the unfortunate part where from what I gather their main purpose and passion in creating the videos is to travel around the world I guess in places where people would view it as really dangerous they wouldn't want to go there and this way I suppose by using things like the drone footage you can show the beauty of the area. Or since the couple had previously said that they wanted to share their journey online to show that the countries with a bad reputation are still okay to travel. And I suppose everyone would know just with all the tension around the world in the area, it says a source told the Times that the Iranian authorities had informed Miss King that she was being detained in hope of a prisoner swap. You're pretty much out of luck there, huh? How unfortunate is that? Where essentially they wanted to show the good of the area and so forth, but unfortunately, it turned out to be, I guess you could say, true in terms of the tension and everything like that in the area, which you should, I guess, avoid as a tourist. And while they were doing their journey, essentially they uploaded a video and they said here, quote, we're now in Iran and we're camped on a nice hill here next to the capital of Tehran. And then afterwards, people realized they haven't been posting updates in so long. So people were wondering like, where are you? It's been a month, are you guys okay? And then afterwards, it was revealed what had happened to them. I guess for their background, it says they basically quit their regular job to do this. And for the most part, it sounds like they were successful in what they were doing. And it says their blog and YouTube channel, which has over 22,000 subscribers, are both called The Way Overland. I mean, even for me, as someone who flies a drone as a hobby, being interested in what's happening, I guess, regulation-wise, hopefully it'll be better for recreational people. It's just an example of how you should really research about where you're going when you bring the drone, because you never know. Some of them might take it really seriously in that way. Makes me think how I know a person who pre-planned his trip to go to Hong Kong way before, and as many of you guys know, there's all that riot and protest. I would personally avoid it still, but I guess for some people, they just feel what they see in the media is just over sensationalized, it's not that bad, which, you know, in some cases it is true. 
But still, I would probably avoid it in general. I've actually never tried to bring my drone through an airport. Who knows what that would be like if you're bringing it to a different country. Like even let's just say from here in Canada to the US, would they actually give you a huge deal over it? I've never tried it personally, but I guess we'll see if I ever come to that situation. I still remember one example where I went to the US just to attend a convention and on the way there, holy, it's so strict. They treat you like a prisoner, like from my experience, bomb sniffing dogs on your bags and everything like that. Like, wow, what's going on here? Like, I'm just like visiting a convention just to see some stuff. And then on the way back home, like crossing the border, going back in Canada, the guy just asked, okay, what were you doing there on your back? He's like, welcome back home. Like no real like interrogation or anything like that. Like just shows you, I guess, the huge difference in terms of what different countries have. Maybe it's just the fact that I was returning home as a Canadian citizen, but I would imagine it's just more strict like going across the border to there in general. Oh, what's that bright heat spot there? Neat. I'm surprised this doesn't go inside a tree or something like that. Oh, the heck's there an ambulance here all of a sudden? Definitely no flying today. I guess it's time for the archive. See you guys later.